David Howard Thornton is killing the horror genre, but I truly feel like the mean one may be the thing that kills the horror genre. Listening to the Cabin of Horrors podcast. Go behind the scenes of all your favorite horror movies from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and now. I am your host, The Incredible Josh. Welcome to episode two of season two of the Cabin of Horrors podcast. It's a very special Christmas episode for all of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for supporting me. I'm going to say that every every freaking episode because I'm just so grateful that anybody listens to my podcast and that anyone actually gives a darn on what I have to say about horror movies. So thank you guys so much for listening and tuning in. And please, I encourage you, if you think there's somebody else who may like my podcast, please share it with them. Please help me get the name out and share it with people who want to know more about horror. Feel free to share my podcast out. I would absolutely love it if you did. Sharing is caring after all, right? So on this episode, we're going over the mean one, which is the new Grinch movie, well, I shouldn't say Grinch, because they don't say the Grinch at all in this movie, right? It's a parody, and I didn't want to get sued, but it, we all know it's the Grinch. So David Howard Thornton plays the Grinch. Movie sucked. IMO, but I'll go over all of that in more detail, of course. We're also continuing our Decades in Review series for the 1980s. This year is 1981. And originally, I was actually going to review An American Werewolf in London, but I have a problem with that movie. Like, I love it. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's one of my favorite movies. But I don't classify it as a horror movie. I consider it more as a creature feature love story than I do a horror movie. So I didn't really feel comfortable reviewing it on the podcast, believe it or not. I just, I don't consider it a horror movie. And I may get flack for that. <laughs> I may get tons of heat and hate from you guys online for that. But I just, I don't consider it a horror movie. So instead, we're going to one of my favorite slasher movies from the 80s. My Bloody Valentine. I know it's not Valentine's Day. I know it's Christmas. But it doesn't matter. Because My Bloody Valentine, you can watch all year round. <laughs> so let's talk about The Mean One. It is a film that just came out this year. It is a Christmas slasher film directed by Stephen Lamorty and written by Flip and Finn Cobbler. The film is a parody. It's a parody of the 1957 children's book, How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. And it stars David Howard Thornton. Of course, we all know him as Art the Clown. And he is starring as the Grinch in The Mean One. And seriously is the only redeeming quality of the entire movie. Like, I kid you not, David Howard Thornton carried this movie on his shoulders because he was literally the, the only thing that was worth watching in this movie. But unfortunately, even that wasn't enough for me to, to call this a decent movie or even a B movie. It was, it was a crappy movie at best. The film was first announced on October 7th, 2022 by XYZ Films, who collaborated with A Sleight of Hand Productions along with Amy Rose Productions and Cali Pictures on the production of this film. It was released theatrically on December 9th, 2022 by Atlas Film Distribution to extremely overwhelmingly negative reviews. <laughs> I don't think I've yet to see a single person that actually reviewed this movie and in some way liked it. <laughs> And there's not much for me to give you for the behind the scenes of this film. Obviously, there's not really much there. So what we're going to do is just talk about the film. The thing is, this film was a limited release. So not many people had the opportunity to see it. It was a very limited theatrical release. Thankfully, I actually got my hands on a digital copy because of a promotion I was a part of. So I, w I was like, sick, y'all. Take it. I'll watch it. It's a movie I want to see because it has David Howard Thornton in it. But man, it's 90 minutes of my life. I really wish I got back, guys. <laughs> Even Bloody Disgusting called it out. And this is the review that Bloody Disgusting gave on the film. First of all, they said it was 2.5 out of 5. That was their rating for the mean one. And they said, A concept this outrageous is begging to go full camp, but only occasional moments of self-awareness shine among material that's otherwise played straight. That is the best 
review that I could read for this movie. Because, honestly, going into this, right, you know it's a parody of The Grinch. So you know it's going to be campy. It's going to be full camp. It has to be, right? So why, as a filmmaker, or even a screenplay writer, why wouldn't you embrace that camp? You know, go full camp and just give it your all. This film seriously takes itself too seriously. (laughs) Like, you should be embracing how campy this movie could be and the humor within it. I, I, I know it's supposed to be a parody, but there's literally not a moment in here that I actually laughed or found it funny in any way, shape, or form. It was just a movie where they tried to take the concept of The Grinch and Stole Christmas and made it a serious horror movie when they can't because they don't have the rights to it, and it should have been full camp to begin with. It's just, it's a fucking mess. (laughs) But like I said, David Howard Thornton kills it. He carries this movie on his shoulders and really cements himself as someone in horror that can do pretty much anything. Now, if you haven't seen The Mean One, awesome. I'm going to save you the time, (laughs) and we're going to talk about everything that happens in The Mean One now. So the film starts off very similar to The Grinch, with a narration of basically his origin story. We see Cindy, who is Cindy (laughs) you-know-who. I like, anyways. We see Cindy as a child, and she's putting up decorations when a creature in a Christmas costume shows up, and a brawl ensues between the creature and her mom. It ends with the mom being brutally murdered right in front of Cindy. Traumatizes her for life. They tried really hard at the beginning of this movie to hammer that Christmas feeling home. The narration through this film, it's very reminiscent of the original Grinch films and holiday movies in general. So now we know the beginning of Sydney's origin as well as the quote-unquote creature. We're just going to call him the creature right now because they don't actually call him the Grinch. And then we fast forward and see Cindy as a grown woman. And she's coming back home to Newville. Yeah, it's called Newville (laughs) for Christmas. She's suffering, of course, still from trauma and PTSD from what happened that night, because when she enters the town, you see she's immediately stricken with obvious anxiety. So the first thing that happens when they get into town is they get pulled over by a cop, and they're told to take the Christmas antlers off their window, as it is considered a distraction to drivers in town. Kind of weird, but okay. We find out at this point that Cindy is actually back in town to sell her childhood home after it was recommended to her by her therapist. Once she ends up back at the home, she's immediately flooded with feelings and emotions from that night, and then ends up having a mild hallucination when she's revisiting the fireplace. This was where she first witnessed the creature at the beginning of the film. During the night, Cindy continues to see the creature, has nightmares of the creature attacking her while she's sleeping, and her dad, who's been traveling with her this whole time, helps keep her grounded and reminds her that everything's okay, you're in a safe place, that kind of thing. So it's the next morning, and Cindy's in a local coffee shop when she runs into the sheriff, the same one who attended the murder of her mother as a child. We then have a flashback to that night where the sheriff is talking to young Cindy, and she gives an image of the creature that she saw that night who had killed her mother. However, the sheriff tries to convince her to change her story, that it was a man who attacked her mother and not this weird-looking creature. Cindy's dad at this point comes into the coffee shop, and he's not able to find any Christmas decorations anywhere in town. It's then discovered that there are no Christmas decorations anywhere to be found in sight, not even in the coffee shop they're currently in. The sheriff shrugs it off, just that, you know, something the town isn't really into. The Christmas season isn't something the town wants to celebrate. However, later that night, Cindy's dad finds some old Christmas decorations in the house and decides he's going to try and spread some Christmas cheer. So they put up their Christmas tree, decorate the house, start getting that Christmas feeling started. Suddenly, strange occurrences start to happen in the house. When Cindy steps outside, the creature suddenly appears in the house and kills her dad, while she watches on, unable to get inside the house and save him. Cindy then wakes up in a hospital, and people think that she's crazy, because she's trying to claim that the same creature in a Santa suit that killed her mother now killed her father. So everyone bills her as crazy, the sheriff included. However, the young cop, the one that pulled her over earlier, seems to have some doubt that Cindy's crazy and might think there's some sort of merit to this story. Cindy ends up getting released from the hospital, and she heads back to the house while the mayor of the town heads to the police station to talk about Cindy. She makes it clear to the sheriff that this Christmas killer creature nonsense can't be spread around the town, and it needs to be squashed before it gets out of hand. 
back at the house, Cindy's cleaning up when she finds a flower laying where her father was murdered. She heads out to investigate the forest and find the source of this flower. I guess she thinks it's a clue to finding the creature or something. It's not really clear, but safe to assume. She ends up falling into a cave when she's exploring the mountains, and she soon discovers that others have ended up in the same fate that she finds herself in, because she finds a wallet with an ID in it when she's searching the cave. She ends up making her way out when she catches the creature through her camera while it's attacking someone viciously. She confronts the creature, which is the first look we get at the creature in the movie. Looks amazing. Definitely looks like a scary Grinch. Like, I'll give them that. David Howard Thornton can pull off the facial everything. And the thing is, right, is that the Grinch doesn't actually, or sorry, the mean one, the creature, whatever, (laughs) doesn't actually talk in this movie. Probably because that would, you know, go against the rights or the parody aspect of it. And it would mess with the rights, I guess. I don't know. That's what I'm assuming. So having David Howard Thornton in another silent role (laughs) really made it work. That's like the only thing that worked in this movie. Now, Cindy is seen at another similar crime scene, right? (laughs) Where somebody's been brutally, viciously attacked. So she tries to push the monster theory again until the sheriff shows up, completely disproves the photos that she caught of the creature, and then goes on to blame Cindy for the fact that the town no longer celebrates Christmas because she's making all these false claims about a a killer monster on Christmas time. But that's not going to stop her. No, no, that's not going to get in the way of her finding this creature. So what Cindy does is she starts taping Have You Seen Me flyers with the photos that she took of the creature. She starts posting those all around town, trying to find others who may have seen this creature and help, help her and join her cause, right? In the meantime, the young cop investigates the wallet that Cindy had found in the cave and determines that it was of someone who was reporting missing years ago. Elsewhere in town, there's a Christmas party that's happening, which of course, this ends up summoning the creature to appear and begins killing each and every one of them. Cindy ends up seeing the news report of these killings, and then her power goes out. The creature makes an appearance outside the house, tries to make his way inside. A struggle ensues between the creature and Cindy, who ends up fighting him off momentarily when an older man shows up out of nowhere and saves her. They end up going to a bar where, (laughs) I know that sounds bad, old man shows up, saves the day, and they end up heading out to a bar together. (laughs) But they end up going to a bar, and the old man shares with Sydney that he knows about the creature too. This is where we first hear the title of the mean one. This is where they start to classify him as the mean one. Before he was just like a monster or a creature or the Christmas killer. (laughs) Now he's the mean one. And the old man mentions that he has tons of hate towards Christmas. The mean one does. He'll attack and kill anyone who is celebrating the holiday or spreading Christmas cheer. So now we have the motive. The motive is as stupid as it sounds. And honestly, this movie had potential to be somewhat of a cult classic if they embraced the camp. But they didn't. They took themselves way too freaking seriously in this movie. Way too seriously. Sydney then heads back over to the police station in light of the fact there's now another witness to the creature. Or sorry, now I can say the mean one, because we're at that part in the movie. <laughs> there's now another witness to the mean one, but the cops will have none of it. They don't give her any chance to talk, they don't want to hear it. However, the young cop, he heads down into the same cave that Cindy checked out earlier, and then finds plenty more wallets down there, along with a rotted corpse. So, looks like we might have somebody in law enforcement going on Cindy's side. The young cop, though, ends up hiding when the mean one shows up in the cave. However, he's able to make his way out of the cave, and he runs into the same old man that Cindy was talking to, and he introduces himself as Zeus. The cop then gets the warning not to do anything Christmas-related, so that he doesn't summon the mean one to come after him. So he goes back, meets up with Cindy, and the two of them work together on figuring out what is exactly going on here. Which is great, because we'd like to know the same. So Cindy decides that she's going to take this mean one on itself and kill it so she starts training in one honestly guys one of the most ridiculous training montages i've ever seen like remember those old 80s action movies like rocky and you know rambo and the jean-claude van damme movies where they're doing like the training montages with the 80s music in the background this was reminiscent of that but in a modernized christmas horror way it was so bad it was so so bad it wasn't even funny it wasn't even laughable it was just cringe that's the best way to describe it the scene was cringe Honestly, like this movie, I know, like I said, it was billed as a parody. We all know going into this, it wasn't going to be good, right? By by the traditional sense. It's not even a decent B-movie, though. It's just a failed attempt 
<laughs> B movie. But anyways, so Cindy and the cop, they're investigating, and they find out that the town is advertising hiking trails into the mountains, where the same places where these bodies were found. Specifically, the mayor is the one who's running this, which then leads them to believe that they're actually luring people to the mean one on purpose. However, it doesn't matter anyways, because when the mayor's car ends up breaking down in the mountains, the mean one doesn't have any sympathy for her. She ends up meeting her demise. Of course. <laughs> and the other thing is, too, guys, is... The kills weren't that good in this movie. Like, I can deal with a crappy movie as long as the kills are somewhat decent and entertaining. They weren't. And it did the biggest faux pas for me in a horror movie. Same reason that I bash and will forever hate the Midnight Meat Train. Because there's one thing. Regardless of how good you do your CGI in a movie, there is one thing that you should never CGI. And that is blood and blood splatter. It looks terrible, it never looks realistic, it looks beyond campy, it looks fucking stupid, to be honest with you, and completely takes me out of the movie. What? Immediately, you can have the best movie. It could be Halloween Kills, which is one of my favorite slasher movies of all time. If they were to put CGI blood in that movie, I would not like it anymore. I would totally denounce it, and I would not be able to watch it. That is the one thing that I cannot get behind, is CGI blood in horror movies. And that's what The Grinch had. Or sorry, The Mean One. I can't stop calling it The Grinch. The Mean One had CGI blood. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Seriously, in a movie where you have David Howard Thornton who can play a role where practical effects are kind of his forte to mess around with, you're going to CGI it? Really? That just pissed me off. To be honest with you. And immediately I was like, I, I build this movie as a terrible fucking movie. <laughs> but I digress. I digress. So the young cop gets back to the jail where he confronts the sheriff. The sheriff reveals that he was a part of it with the mayor all along. He knows about the mean one. He knows about luring people into the mountains to feed it, all that kind of stuff. And he also shares that he had seen the mean one when he was looking for a missing person in the, in the caves of the mountains. They figured that by feeding the mean one, they'd be keeping the residents of the town safe. What I don't understand about that logic is why not try to fight it, right? Like, gather a mob together, lure the thing out, attack from all sides, boom. You know, Halloween kill style. <laughs> like, I know it didn't work out for them, but they were taking on Mikey. But, like, why don't they decide that they're going to feed this thing humans instead of actually trying to, like do a mob mentality and take it out? I don't know. I thought that was kind of weird. Like, I get, you know, maybe trying the mob mentality, it didn't work, so then you go this route. But no, they just went, okay, let's feed this thing fucking humans. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> no logic. But anyways, so the boy cop decides he's going to be a hero, and he heads out to hunt the mean one, while Cindy is still chilling and getting ready back at the house with her training montage. So she finds out that he's headed that way, so she decides she's going to try and save him now. So the sheriff shows up and saves the, the young cop before Cindy's able to get there. However, the sheriff ends up sacrificing himself in an attempt to save his counterpart. Cindy shows up just as the cop is being carried away in an ambulance, and then she continues on the journey of killing the mean one. She heads home, lights up her house with all the Christmas decorations and lights she can find in an attempt to lure the mean one out. It obviously works, <laughs> and she's pretending to be asleep in the house once he arrives and makes his way inside. However, the trap's set, and then Cindy springs into action with Zeus, and the struggle ensues to take down the mean one. Cindy ends up shooting the mean one multiple times and trapping him in a bear trap, but that doesn't stop him none. The two continue to fight outside the house, and Cindy ends up hitting the mean one with a firecracker as they're running inside the house. Then Cindy begins to stab him to pieces when she discovers that the mean one still carries this necklace thing that she gave him when she was a child before the murder of her mother. And it's so weird because the two of them end up having some kind of like emotional connection moment, and she's unable to kill it. Instead, she kisses the mean one and shows it forgiveness. And then guess what? This causes the mean one's heart to grow three sizes and literally explode and effectively kill him. The film ends with Cindy's photo of the mean one going viral and the whole world's talking about whether or not this was a hoax. 
The town of Newville is also back to celebrating Christmas as they used to, and they actually ended up using it to their advantage. They made the mountain where the mean one was located and first seen as a tourist attraction so that people can come hike the mountains and try to spot the mean one. Now that you've heard me talk about the mean one, how interested are you in seeing it? Because <laughs> that's literally frame by frame pretty much what happens in this movie. There's no epic kills. There's zero great acting. Filmography is garbage. They use CGI blood. Like the list goes on. This is the worst Christmas horror movie I've ever seen. Not even B-movie level. Like I am all for bad Christmas movies and I am all for B-movies, indie horror movies. I love them. But this was a failed attempt. And the whole reason I feel like if they didn't take themselves so seriously, this could have been a really good film. This could have been a campy parody on The Grinch, but they took it too seriously. But anyways, that's my thoughts and opinions on The Mean One. I leave it up to you on whether you actually uh, want to see that when it hits VODs, which I assume it will. But now that that wraps up the Mean One part of this episode... And now we're heading into our Decade in Review of 80s Horror.